Hello, my name is Vaughn Purdy, your host of Falcon Focus. With me today is a very special guest. We're talking about all things new at Simmons College of Kentucky. I'm very happy to introduce our audience to a Mr. Javan Reed, who is our new Vice President of Strategic Initiatives. That's a big title, but I know he'll do a great job. So welcome to the show, Javan. Thank you. Thank Say you so hello much. to our audience. And first of all, I know everybody has a lot of questions about why Simmons College of Kentucky. Tell our audience how you heard about Simmons College of Kentucky and why you wanted to come here. Certainly. So first, thank you for having me today. And I am extremely proud to be at Simmons College right now. Uh, it's just uh, absolute joy being at uh, one of our nation's gyms and I believe in all historical black colleges not just Simmons College but particularly Simmons because uh, if, if it being the last so there's something unique about being in this position and having no other place to go but up so okay. that's exciting to me. Now when you say the last explain that to our audience because a lot of people don't understand they look at Simmons and say why mm -hmm is it the way it is, mm -hmm. but they don't understand some of the history. So when you say the last HBCU, please explain that. Uh, it's designated as the 107th. Uh, Correct. But I do believe there's been some shifts and changes around, around you know, what institutions have uh, fallen out of status, the HBCU status, but particularly uh, institution had to exist prior to 1964. Correct. Uh, the, the Murrow Acts, I believe, was uh, in terms of defining those land grant institutions. So uh, being the 107th HBCU, but uh, again, or just being an HBCU designated institution, uh, had th th they had to exist prior to, you know, that year. So. Mm -hmm. Um, at this point, there are no others, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> we can't go backwards. History is history, as our president, history is here. Dr. Cosby, always says. Yes. We were founded in 1879, so that makes us one of the original HBCUs. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this designation is key yes. to all the things that we do moving forward. Yes. Now, tell our audience a little bit about your background and history. You are not a stranger to HBCUs. Absolutely. And then, uh, uh, back to that conversation as well, HBCUs carry a, a particular spirit. Oh, even when you walk on the campus, mm -hmm. I walked on the campus of Simmons College and it was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that scene from Black Panthers and T'Challa exactly. just ex being welcome home. It's the spirit of our ancestors. It, it is so impactful, it's meaningful, and it's this thing to be a part of that's larger than yourself. Yes, exactly. That's, as everybody know who, who watched this show, <laughs> I'm an HBCU graduate. I'm very proud to be at Simmons. Yes. Uh, and just to watch the transformation of Simmons College of Kentucky and the infusion yes. of HBCU-ness yes. in this town, in this zip code, is amazing. And it's just I, I amazing to be a it. part of it, and I'm glad you feel the, that way. So how did we find you? Who can we credit to bringing <laughs> you to Simmons College of Kentucky? I've had conversations prior with uh, Candace Hope. Okay. Uh, Candace, um, we, we were working through uh, assisting institutions with completing the Second Chance Pell application okay. process. Um, which is something we could talk about later. Yeah, we can but, come back to uh, that. Yeah, we can come back to that. But so really Candace and also uh, Dr. Frank Smith. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Frank Smith is our executive vice president and special assistant to Dr. Cosby. Yes. And he's been here since the almost the inception of Simmons. Yeah. Uh, since we've gotten our accreditation, Dr. Frank Smith has been a vital part of what we do here at Simmons. And those stories that he shared, I'm like, oh. <laughs> and I would say Dr. Smith calls himself uh, mentoring you and yes. guiding you along. Yes. So was it hard to make the decision to come to Simmons? No, it was immediate. Uh, it was an immediate shift to say, okay, I need to be a part of this. I need to be here at this particular time in history. Um, and it felt more so like a calling uh, okay. versus a job application. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That, I felt the same way. Yeah. A calling, like I'm supposed to be here as well, as well. Now. Where did you go to college? And tell us about a little bit about your background. Certainly. So I, uh, my HBCU experience started at Edward Waters College in Jacksonville, Florida. So both as a student as, an, as well as an employee. Uh, so as a student, um, I attended uh, class one night out of the week in, okay. a, in a program called CLIMB, which is desi designated for learners, uh, adult learners. So okay. I started my educational experience later in life. Oh, uh, wonderful. So but prior to that, I, I just wanted to be an entrepreneur. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. wonderful because we yeah. have a lot of students who start 
uh, second lives at Simmons and yeah. go to college later in life because they got distracted or wanted to do something else. Yeah. It's not necessarily education is not immediate for everyone. Yeah. Uh, so we have a lot of students who've taken various paths to get the Simmons. Yes. So that's wonderful to, to hear coming from you. Yeah, I, I advocate for non-traditional students and so that's the type of programming I've worked with and the niche that I've been able to in higher education. Okay. So then what was for you next? What did you do next? So after my, well, at Edward Waters College, uh, an amazing, an amazing, at, not college, excuse me, let me backtrack, Edward Waters University. Exactly. <laughs> now they're based in? Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. Yes. So we changed the uh, university status earlier this year. Oh, so wonderful. excited for them and the growth that's taking place at that institution. But just the uh, rich black culture mm -hmm. and experience mm -hmm. and that, uh, those folks held me accountable. They made me want more to do more mm -hmm. and, and to use what I have for a better good. And so that call to social action was embedded in me at Edward Waters College. So that's my forever HBCU. I think that's <laughs> wonderful because I think I, I, all HBCUs do that. Yes. There's this call to action, a call to greatness. Yes. A call to step into who we should be yeah. and who we can become. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I was a very shy, introvert believe it or not coming to college just changed my life the entire trajectory and yes. I'm sure it does that every day to our students across HB at HBCUs across this country and I take it as a personal uh, endeavor of mine to meet the students meet yes. the young ladies and say you can be whatever you want to be do yes. the work put in uh, the task and you can go further and yeah. it's just a wonderful Thing to see us collectively yes. as HBCUs in our black communities across this country um, doing our thing. Yeah, I was on a conference call yesterday with like 10 other HBCUs and just to watch them, it was via Zoom, but it was just wonderful to see the collaboration that goes on at HBCUs, oh, yeah. just like in any educational uh, colleges and universities across this country. Uh, but the collaboration between HBCUs is special. Yes. Uh, it's something that we do and we don't take for granted. Um, the city of Louisville has finally, is finally coming to learn what HBCUs bring yeah. to the economy. And it's a beautiful thing. You know, to accept HBCUs, you have to be willing to accept black excellence. Exactly. So we gotta ask. And we work ready on black it. excellence <laughs> every day. Every you gotta day. be ready for, every day. For, for us to walk in excellence. Right. I mean, I think that's what it births. Right, overall. that's what it births. And across the country, there are HBCUs everywhere that are doing the same thing that we do. And it's a partnership, a brotherhood, a sisterhood, if you will, across the country yes. to endeavor to create black excellence. Absolutely. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. So after you left, you went into a different career. Tell me about it. Well, yeah, well, now prior to my educational career, yeah. um, um, uh, I was a fashion designer. So I created ah. an organization called Fashion Forward and I spent time creating uh, women's wear collections okay. and showcasing them across the world. So that was a fun life. And well, then... you let me know when you <laughs> want to create some, some women's fashion collections. I consider myself, what do I do? A shopper, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I would be happy. Yeah, so that was my that. first career. And then having an the opportunity to attend Edward Waters College uh, opened um, my eyes to the, this, this earning desire to educate and to teach. I work for many nonprofit organizations in the greater Jacksonville community, and then I had the opportunity to serve as the administrative assistant okay. at Edward Waters College. So I started uh, with a salary of $25,000 as an Look administrative assistant. Look how you started, assistant. but you were willing to be a part of Edward Waters. Oh, I wanted to be a part of it. It was excellent. I had the opportunity to book travel for like Nikki Giovanni, ah. coordinate, um, you know, uh, speaking series for Michael Eric Dyson under the first year experience program. And I also supported TRIO programs okay. and that sort of thing. So at, I've learned multiple levels of an institution, uh, what it means for student wraparound services, academic advising, okay. um, or uh, what it means to build a curriculum um, and backwards design, you know, the, the, the standards as it relates to practice exams and, you know, the okay. state license exams and that sort of thing. So I've been involved in multiple facets of the institutions um, uh, after Edward Waters had the opportunity to serve at the nation's first historical black college, 
well, well, we call it the first <laughs> owned and operated by uh, African Americans, and it and started is, out as a Wilberforce Center. Uh, at Wilberforce, Wil and Wilberforce yeah. is next door in the state of Ohio. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, tell us about your experience there and how long you were there. At Wilberforce, it was an amazing experience. I had the opportunity to work with the faculty to create what we call the College of Graduate Adult and Continuing Education. Mm -hmm. uh, they also had a master's degree program and uh, rehabilitation services, I believe it was. But uh, my experience uh, related to curriculum design, uh, okay. working across five campuses, satellite campuses, wow. in, in terms of uh, scaling distance learning and online learning. Um, so I work with uh, uh, a giant in this business, Dr. Alfred Pinker, uh, okay. as the provost, and and also just uh, some people I learned so much from, especially the faculty. Just like the faculty at Edward Wardus College held okay. me accountable, even as a young professional, the the faculty at Wilberforce ensured that I knew how the academy operated and you know what I needed to know. So that's that's that experience and. And after Wilberforce University, I had the opportunity to serve at Wiley College. Wow, tell Home us about Wiley. Great That's debaters. In, Wiley is in Marshall, Texas. Texas, yeah. Marshall, Texas. So that was a phenomenal experience. But Wiley was a training ground for me as well. Um, I had the uh, arduous task of marrying the correctional institution with a higher education institution hmm. to educate students who are currently incarcerated. Okay, now I'm understanding. You had all this experience, this <laughs> yeah. wonderful experience. Yes. So what made you want to come to Simmons? Mm -hmm. You saw an opportunity? Yes. Tell us more and how that came about. My, the only reason I love the work in higher education is to provide access, kick down doors, uh -huh. uh, widen the doors, <laughs> if you will, for marginalized folks. So folks that folks have kind of counted out, if right. you will. Um, um, so having the opportunity to work at Simmons College was intriguing to me because you get to sit at a level where you help make decisions, uh -huh. uh, you know, write policy, mm -hmm. uh, design processes, and even implement uh, practices that would further access for, for students. And so that's why this was attractive okay. to me. So we have you in this great title called mm -hmm. Strategic Initiatives. Yes. What are some of the things that you're looking at doing, implementing? Yeah, you've been with us about Three months? Yes. If that, okay. Yes. Uh, tell us about strategic initiatives. What are some of the first initiatives you hope to put in place? I know you're getting mm -hmm. your feet wet, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, tell us what you see as the goals just for that strategic initiatives uh, endeavor you're in the midst of. So primarily I've been focusing on distance learning and okay. online learning, um, uh, especially because of the generous uh, donations from Humana. Great. Uh, and so we are able to uh, offer online education, which are hoping for a launch by fall 2023. Now that'll be great because if we're still in COVID, yes. the distance learning piece will be an important piece of work. That's the challenging yeah, part of this is learning. Part. Now that everyone has no other choice, you know, right. <laughs> it was a time when distance learning wasn't cool. And now people are probably ready to get back to the in-class experience. But COVID has shifted the demands from ancillary offices and just the academy all, all together. Okay. Yeah. Well, it sounds like really exciting work, uh, work, but when we come back, we're gonna take a break right now, but when we come back, yes. we're gonna dive more so into some of the partnerships you've been able to get yeah. with Simmons College of Kentucky and some new, some even greater new initiatives that, that are about to take place in the uh, next several months over the next year. So we'll be right back with Dr. Javan Reed. The music department at Simmons College now offers a gospel track for its music performance degree. Our department of music exists to develop musical knowledge and skill. Students become beneficiaries of program features and faculty that distinguish music as both an academic and artistic discipline. Program options include brass and woodwind instruments, as well as guitar, bass, strings, piano, percussion, and voice. Your gifts will be encouraged and developed by a staff of experienced performing musicians and by the warm support of your peers. 
you will have frequent opportunities to perform, including vocal ensemble, gospel choir, jazz ensemble, marching band, and other ensembles, both on and off campus. Your music program can go no higher than those who lead it. Now is your time to build a strong music ministry from within. Help support passion already in your community. Help develop gifts already in your congregation. You might have the next James Cleveland in your church and don't know it. The heritage of artistic dignity found at historic black colleges and universities. The tradition of black excellence in gospel music. The calling to use your gift to turn hearts. Your journey toward obtaining a bachelor's degree in music starts now. Simmons College of Kentucky. Apply today. Become a part of the legacy. Welcome back to Falcon Focus. With me again is Dr. Javan Reed, the new Vice President for Strategic Initiatives at Simmons College of Kentucky. The reason I call him Dr. Reed <laughs> is, a, is a specific reason because he's working on his PhD. Yes. Tell us more about that. Yes, I'm working on a executive PhD in urban higher education leadership at Jackson State University. And what does that entail? That entails uh, de development of institutions, of uh, marginalized institutions, um, minorities, excuse me, minority serving institutions, HBCUs, public institutions. So we're just learning uh, education in and out. Uh, we're learning practices of higher education, the law, uh -huh. finances, a number of things. Uh, but my, my research is uh, from the lens of uh, barriers to, to barriers to college uh -huh. success. Oh, that's great. Barriers to college success are a lot. Tell our audience about Jackson State, for those who don't know who Jackson State is. Certainly. Jackson State University is located in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh -huh. Uh, it's the only research, urban research institution as well. So, and yeah. it's an HBCU. It's an HBCU, uh, and so pretty, pretty much, I've been uh, focusing on the football games lately. Ah, as well. so, you exactly. Know. But the, Deion Sanders, Deion Sanders, former uh, Dallas Cowboys mm -hmm. running back, yep. one of the historic. Uh, Dallas Cowboys. Dallas is not my team. It actually happens to be my son's team. Why? Can you he say wasn't that on alive game? when all of that was going on. He's only 16. Uh, <laughs> Can so, you say you're not a Dallas Cowboys no, fan on camera? No, I am not a camera. Dallas Cowboys <laughs> fan on camera or anywhere. I am a. I am from North Carolina, so Carolina Panthers. So, but my husband is an Eagles fan, so we have a divided household at all times. But tell people about Jack Jackson State is one of the historic HBCUs as well. Why yeah. did you pick them for their uh, for that purpose. doctorate program? Uh, yeah, for that purpose, okay. I received my PhD from a uh, from an HBCU. That's wonderful, Yes, wonderful. That just lets people know, now, since you've been sit sitting here, we've learned about four different HBCUs <laughs> that I'm sure our audience didn't know about. Yeah. So the, the takeaway message is there's so many HBCUs, so again, many. 101, mm -hmm. um, and doing great things across the country. So yes. tell us a little bit about the program, your doctorate program, when, when will you finish that? Yeah, so I'm in the uh, still coursework phases. Um, I'm still uh, ramping up research. I've submitted, uh, you know, <laughs> so you know, you go through that long process too as well. So just working to work with my faculty advisors in terms of my uh, uh, finalized dissertation topic and, you know, the methodology and all of that good oh, stuff in wow. terms of approval. That is so, so that is so uh, wonderful yeah. because it just brings, uh, so much knowledge to Simmons College of Kentucky. Yeah. So we talked about strategic initiatives of what you're going to be doing. Yeah. And we talked a little bit about before we went to break about your centers of yes. excellence. Can yes. you elaborate more on that? Certainly. The um, centers of excellence is this idea of just grouping like activities uh, such as registration, academic advising, counseling services, all those wraparound services. So one would be the Falcons uh, Academic Center of Excellence okay. is, a, is one we will implement this fall semester. So we're uh, pretty much just trying to revitalize the way that, you know, a, STEM, a student comes into the institution and how we support them okay. from that perspective. Uh, the other one would be the Digital Teaching and Learning Center, which I'm extremely excited about. Uh, that essentially prepares faculty members to teach in a distance or online 
environment, how to use a learning management okay. system. And we do a training each Friday uh, called Faculty Friday. As oh, tell us about that, that because that's yeah. probably some new initiative that you're bringing in. Yeah, Faculty Friday, we pretty much have a guest uh, every Friday or myself or Chelsea. Chelsea is uh, Chelsea Sloan is our new uh, curriculum designer. Okay. And so she works with the faculty on a continuing basis to, do, you know, to redesign or to create new courses at Simmons okay. College. Uh, as you know, we have multiple deg new degrees coming. And so uh, essentially that's our concept, our way of providing professional development to the okay. faculty. So how much of those, I mean, we can't, we can't um, let you get away without talking about, you te you're teasing us with these new degrees. Yeah. Which ones can you talk about right now? What are, what are our hopes for the future? Mm -hmm. uh, one part of, that's really important, a vision for our president is to grow, of course, the institution. Yeah. The only way you can grow the institution is to increase or improve your offerings for students. I so agree. can you tell us more about what's coming in the pipeline those things that you can actually talk about right now? Yeah, um, at, under the Digital Teaching and Learning Center, one, um, we, again, like we're working with instructors to, to, to outfit classes and, you know, create online classes, but one of the degrees is the 100% online uh, general, uh, de the uh, AA degree okay. uh, in general studies. Okay. And again, uh, with working professionals or other responsibilities, second career, you have students need access and they yes. need, you know, we need to provide programming that they have access to mm -hmm. um, and even more so that fits their uh, general life apparatus. And so essentially uh, that 100% uh, degree is one I would uplift first. Okay, and and so that'll come take place in fall? That'll take place in the fall of 2023, I believe it is. Okay. Uh, it's, it's when we're projected to launch, so. Okay. That degree option, I know we have data science coming to the institution, psychology coming mm -hmm. to the institution. Um, and we have our teacher education program. Teacher education program, yes. Which so. is designed to put more black teachers in, in the, the classroom. classrooms across the state. Yes. We're focusing on our partnership with JCPS, which yes. is the Jefferson County Public School System here. But we also want black teachers across the state. Yes. And through some uh, partnerships and help with the state of Kentucky, we've been able to move forward uh, to identifying and starting early training on teachers yes. in definitely by fall of 2022. That's amazing. So it's gonna be amazing. Um, speaking of initiatives, we do have um, a few more. Yep. Uh, I'm gonna let you be the one to, <laughs> we've already launched, we announced this a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. but could you announce to our audience one of the newest partnerships that we're very, very happy and yeah. proud of? Yeah, but that's another reason I absolutely love Simmons as well, because it's concern or connection to the community. Yeah. And so uh, the, the uh, Simmons is a partner in the Butterfly Project, mm -hmm. uh, which basically removes the digital, or helping to remove the digital divide within the state um, and within the city as well. Mm -hmm. uh, now, so does that focus on just our students or is that the community at large? That's a community at large, but Simmons is definitely a partner in that. Okay. And now, uh, most recently been announced uh, in partnership with Tennessee State University, uh, Simmons College will become an Apple hub. Did you say, say that again? Apple. Everybody knows what Apple, <laughs> Apple. <laughs> Apple. We're talking about Apple, the technology giant. Yes. Yes. How do we become a part of that? That's amazing. Yeah, so we will basically uh, offer coding classes and developing classes over this, I believe it's the summer when okay. that's projected to launch. And those summer are free. Summer 2022. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes, that'll that's be right. the first. It's 2021 now, 2022. Yeah. So under the amazing partnership, I believe 36 other institutions are part of this partnership as well. But Apple is uh, partnering with HBCUs yes. essentially to remove the digital divide or to uh, help uh, help everyone understand that you, everyone can code, everyone can mm -hmm. create as well. So and right here in this community, yes. in zip codes 40203, 40210, yes. we will have coding yes. and Apple partnership led by Simmons College of Kentucky yes. in partnership with other HBCUs across the country. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. That is very amazing. And it's open to the community? Open to the community and free. Okay. So we have to create the model for it. When will we technically open our doors 
for the community. Well, we're still uh, doing the, the groundwork for it. We actually, today, uh, we will be a part of the national celebration okay. uh, that welcome all HBCU, HBCUs into the partnership. Okay. So really excited about that later today. Okay. Um, and just basically get the opportunity to put together an innovation team that will help scale that project to implementation. Um, and we begin accepting students, uh, anyone ah, who wants to learn. Wonderful, that yeah. is so wonderful news. Yeah. So all of these changes that you're bringing about, tell me, um, what relationships have you forged? You're, you're new to Louisville. How has that transition been for you? Um, what do you like about Louisville? Yes, it's been really exciting. The opportunities are endless. Mm -hmm. I. Um, just excited to be in a new space. Okay. Uh, definitely excited to be following a giant, Dr. Kevin Cosby. Yes. Just uh, being under his leadership, I, I feel as if, you know, if we are going to uh, do of any good for, for our people, we have mm -hmm. to be up under the word of God and okay. being led, you know, from, from a vision perspective, what, what thus says the Lord. Yes, amen, <laughs> amen. We sit so, here in hollow ground here. Yeah at the studios yes. on the campus of uh, St. Stephen Church. Yes. And Dr. Cosby, this studio is his vision. Yes. Simmons is part of his vision. He yes. leads us in so many different directions that often you say, how in the world are we gonna get all of this done? Yes. But he has a strong <laughs> faith. As you know, you will know, he believes uh, in this college, in this community. Yes. He is one of the most passionate people I know uh, about this community at large yes. and part of the work that we're doing uh, is going to leave a legacy in I this agree. community and that's what makes uh, uh, our work so important hey, Absolutely. and um, the fact that we're uplifting the community. Yeah. So I'm hoping um, your work will be well received and that you will continue to do great things at Simmons. Um, yeah. What do you think um, if I said to you in the next five years, what do you hope to have accomplished here at Simmons? Now, you know, <laughs> I'm a follower of uh, <laughs> certain business practice, so I definitely started with the end in mind. Okay. There's so many opportunities, so many possibilities, and so I'm looking forward to that full-scale di uh, digital teaching and learning center. I'm looking forward to opening the doors for students who are currently incarcerated. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking to open the doors for you know working professionals, just uh, and and just work with the the servant leadership team that's already at Simmons College to just push forward push. to some of those in the initiatives. So I'm well, excited to be. Here. Well, I know you're going to do a great job. Thank you so much for being on the show. I look forward to following your path and being beside you as we get some of these things done in the community. Uh, and I look forward to being a partner. We're going to have you back on our show okay. to monitor your progress. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Again, thank you, Dr. Reed, for being on our show. And thank you, audience, for watching this week's edition of Falcon Focus. Join us again next week.